Back underway then at the start of frame three in our latest Shanghai Masters quarterfinal. And what a start we've had. Breaks of 58 and 62 from Ding to take the first frame as Neil Robertson pulls up short in his attempt at escaping the snooker. Robertson responding with 70 in the second frame. So honours even in the early stages. Five frames the target for a place in the semi-finals. Just hoping for a touching ball there, Ding Jinhui. And still get back to bulk off this. Yeah, he's made an excellent job of that. That was awkward queuing. Judge the pace well. We talked about safety being a key factor today and on the evidence of the fluency of these players in amongst the balls, that certainly will be the case. Now is the yellow going to come to his rescue? It, uh, it has. Yes, applause from the crowd, but always an element of good fortune when you end up nestling behind the yellow. It's going to be interesting here if Neil Robertson attempts to get the cue ball in bulk. Because that red nearest the right corner. There's a few gaps that he then could get through, so he's got to be careful here. Yeah, quite deliberately just trying to block it with yellow and blue. Now, is there a gap through? There is. This will take some cue and nope. Knock this red in. Wow. Well, Ding has struck the ball so sweetly. Barely a potting error from the Chinese to this point. The same goes for Robertson. It's snooker of the very highest order and that was tough wasn't it pretty tight or close to the bought cushion and very straight but the pink stays out well that's a surprise the first real error from Ding Zhongui yeah he was a little bit unlucky there Ding it was awkward queuing as you see there he just had to play it with a little bit of left hand side and it just pushed the cue ball One. to the right caused them to miss the pot I say a wee bit unlucky Decent chance this for Neil Robertson. 
three or four loose reds there. He's stretching a tad so it gets his little extension on. I'd imagine he'll be playing a cannon on the loose red here. Let's use it as a stopper. That's the key red he's looking at, the one at the back of the cluster there. Just in maybe three or four shots time, he may be able to play that and develop the cluster of reds. Does this red pass to the green pocket? Didn't play that as planned. This will be a bonus if it'll go. Needs good queuing this. Cue ball and object ball quite close together. Cute it was. That's another thing impresses me about Neil Robertson. When he's in these situations, he takes his time. Obviously, when the balls are open, he really gets on with it. But he's very, very measured, doesn't he? You know. So he wants to be exactly sure how he wants to if and when he wants to develop that cluster of reds. I think it's also a measure of the mutual... Share. They both know how dangerous the other can be, and that one error could prove to be their only one in a frame, so extra care required. Yeah, you can see there, he's just looking at every option he has here, whether to finish low in the black or high in the black. A cannon in the reds. As I say, very measured he is these days. And he loves playing in China, does Neil Robertson. He won the Wuxi Classic at the start of the season. His eighth ranking title. Good. Won the China Open just before the World Championship back in the spring. Just didn't quite push the cue ball through far enough there. Can't play a cannon in the pack, but can come back for the red to left middle or right middle. He's got a bit of a bad contact. Terry Camilleri has been kept busy there. Yeah, there's no plant anywhere here. He's just looking to finish top side of the pink, just off straight. Off this red. Oh. Well, it couldn't be any closer. I'm sure Neil Robertson was certain that was in. Perhaps he felt it drifted a little. Ran around the lip of the pocket, but stayed out. A slow motion replay of that red. It looked in for all the world when it left his cue, didn't it? And it just dipped towards the near bumper at the last second. Yeah, I think it just dipped about half a millimetre or so, and that was enough. That's the fine margins we've spoken about. 
at this level. Neil Robertson couldn't believe it. One. So, the Aussie left-handers lead 31, but Ding at the table. Yeah, playing the brown here. Two cushions, cannon into the pack of reds. Difficult shot, this. No problem with the pot, it's all about the cannon, of course, but it's a type of shot for a professional, it's difficult to judge. Oh, what an effort this is. Unlucky. Well, he couldn't have hit, hit it much better, could he? It was uh, perfectly executed. Yeah, it looks like he's shaping up for this, though. This red is on to right middle. Oh, it's tight, isn't it? Always the danger of a push shot as well. Yeah, Terry will be keeping his beady eye on this one, won't he? Oh, brilliant. Such a delicate touch required to avoid the foul. Well, he deserved to be on a red there, didn't he? Because he played the split of the reds perfectly. He didn't get the degree of action that he would have hoped into that cluster, but he... Managed to pick out a red, and the break continues. Yeah, and that was beautifully played as well. He had no room for error there, playing for this red. He played it to the inch. Just going round to see if there's a plant at the top of the pack. Well, maybe not, that's not on. So the next key shot is going to be this next red, finish half ball in the black. May have just bounced a little bit too far off the cushion this time. So he wants to knock this in and finish low in the black. Once again, Terry Camilleri called upon to give the cue ball a polish. The last thing Ding needs right now is a kick on a delicate shot like this. Got to be very accurate with these. Yeah, as I mentioned though, he just had a little bit too much angle on the red and he couldn't finish low in the black. And that could be end of break. There's no cannon in the cluster that he can play. So now does this extreme red on the right-hand side go to the far corner? He's having a good look at it. Only red they can leave is the one he's playing. So just the four points separate the two players. Looking reasonably relaxed out there. Always a huge weight of expectation on his shoulders, particularly when he's playing in front of his home crowd. Expected to win every time he shows up. I think it's fair to say that it took him some time to handle that pressure, and no wonder. Yeah, he 
could hear Neil Robertson there. He sighed just as he hit that. He got a massive kick. Terry Camilleri will be charging overtime at this rate. Hard to believe that Ding has been a pro now for 10 years. Burst onto the scene, didn't he, by winning the China Open as a wild card, beating Stephen Hendry, no less, in the final. That was back in 2005, just after his 18th birthday. Can he make of this chance? This blue puts him two in front, so he's going to need all four reds at this visit. Just be interesting here if he might play a little cannon on this red just below the one he's potting here. Just try to push it out into the middle of the table. Brilliant. You read his mind, Alan. Almost as though you've played this game before. <laughs> I know the shots, I just can't play them. <laughs> <laughs> Not true. You've qualified for the Indian Open, correct? Yeah, I'll be going out there in the middle of October. It'll be the first time in India. Indeed, for a lot of the players, it will be the first time there, and I know they're all looking forward to it. Going into new territories. I think meanwhile, trying to avoid a wardrobe malfunction here. So close is he to the pink. Ten. Yeah, that was awkward. That was the cause of not getting through the cue ball properly. He was just stretching. There's still some work to do here. Just worried about importing this, getting a cannon on the black. The red to left corner, that is. Oh, what an effort this is. Yeah, that was quite deliberate. Unusual shot for a professional to have to play. Judged it well now. Can he hold for this other red to the same pocket? You know, he's going to have to go in and out of bulk, I think. Yeah, he's taking his eye off it, hasn't he? He's concentrating on the positional element of the shot there, isn't he? That's why he's missed that black. Not pressure, just... Thinking about where he wanted to leave the cue ball. And in the event, in missing the black, he's at least kept the cue ball in the top half of the table. But this is still a chance for Robertson. Seven points he trails by. Oh, he didn't miss that by much, did he? Couldn't have got any closer without knocking it in. That's why it stayed over the hole. Really tense out there, isn't it? Crowd are engrossed. You can barely hear a pin drop. So much at stake, of course. £80,000, remember, to the winner on Sunday, along with the trophy and the title. was well controlled that it's never easy when the red's in the jaws of the pocket that just to control the cue ball as I say now can he play a little cannon off the brown here let's get a little cannon on the red it looks like the natural angle is going to go round the back of it that just makes it a bit awkward trying to calculate how he'll cannon into that red off the brown it's a big shot, this, in the context of the frame. If it goes right, could be a frame winner. Oh, he's unlucky. 
the red. Well, I don't even think it's on the cut into the right corner. It's just going to be have to be a safety. Would be an incredibly thin cut, wouldn't it? And doubly difficult with the rest as well. Oh. Yeah, and no way of getting away with it should he miss it. So, as I say, it'll just be a safety. So it's going to be a tense finish to this pivotal third frame that you feel it's going to be. It's nice to have these kind of frames, isn't it? You know, we had a great start, as you, you said, both players scored really well the first couple of frames. Yes, it's been no less compelling, has it? No big breaks in this frame, but it's been really gripping stuff. Robertson then using Swerve to get out of the snooker, and he'll settle for that. 12 points, Melbourne left-handed trails by, 35 remaining. Yeah, more than settle for that, Phil, you're right. He's uh, put Ding in an awkward spot this time. How's he going to risk playing in behind the blue? No, no attempt at it. That's a clever little attempt, but I think he's just come short. All about this final red then in frame three. Yeah, there'll be no attempt at the pot here because he'd be leaving the cue ball in the middle of the table. A little bit too risky. So he's going to look for the best safety alternative, I feel. As you say, Phil, with that 12-point lead, he's holding the upper hand just at present. Oh, that's very clever, using green and blue. He's unlucky if he doesn't get the snooker there. Yeah, and he'll just come in round to look at the pot and angle so he can clearly get through to it. So it's a half chance. Just overcut it. means the chance now falls to Ding. It's very straight, this. Not as easy as it might appear. Yeah, you just get that slight angle. It's going to take some cue in this if he's going to get on a colour and pot in the red. Especially as he's digging down on it. This pot's difficult enough, never mind getting the cue ball back towards the blue. One. I think Ding expected to get more action on the cue ball there, has a look at his tip. But the most important thing from his point of view was that the red went down. Yeah, not easy to play an attack in safety. The one thing he wouldn't be doing is shifting the pink, so he doesn't have a lot of Options here. I would think just roll dead weight onto the green. Would be the choice. As I say, there's no chance that he's going to move that. Oh, he's made a good job of that. That's a brilliant shot from Ding Jun Hui. Robertson snookered then. 13 points is the margin. He 
He's a year and off, he is, and that could be curtains for Neil Robertson. There was an element of hidden hope about that one, trusting Delac as to where the yellow would end up. He didn't legislate for the white going in, though. And, well, the easiest of starters here for Ding. He only needs up to and including the brown. Should be a formality, you would think. It's been a hard-fought battle, this third frame. There's still a long way to go. Being struck first with those breaks of 58 and 62. Robertson hit straight back with a 70 for one all. Five. And now Ding just requires this brown to pretty much put frame three safe and edge in front again. And how big does the next frame become in a best of nine match at this level, doesn't it? Final frame before the mid-session break coming up then after this one with Ding having restored his slender advantage. The snooker has been right out of the top draw. Both players are scoring well. Some good tactical play too. It's very much living up to its billing. So Ding Zhenghui triumphs on the colours then after a tactical third frame. He's back in front here. The Chinese leads Neil Robertson of Australia by two frames to one. And we'll have the fourth frame after this short break. <laughs>